Hello and welcome back to another episode of Kit Plus TV brought to you with the support of Media Proxy. Now, the post-production industry has been hit as hard as anyone this year due to COVID-19, mainly down to the fundamental requirements of a post-production workflow, such as access to post-production systems and the physical proximity between individuals and the creative teams. Yeah, there's been a significant rise in new solutions emerging to tackle these issues. We've seen solutions using existing technologies and the capabilities of these solutions being rapidly developed to address the new normal in video post-production. So joining us today is TC, President and CEO of Storage DNA, who we're going to chat about um, how they're enabling remote working across post-production. TC, nice to see you. Thank you for joining us today. Well, thank you for having me, guys. I'm in the mad. It's a pleasure. So it seems that there are still a lot of users out there combating massive data growth with unmanaged set of data management software tools and a growing variety of storage options. You're probably the best person to help us and tell us a bit about how Storage DNA can help. Yeah, I think um, you know one, one of the big challenges we're sort of seeing in the market is that uh, you know while I would say the way users are, are creating data um, and the new post-production pipelines kind of have dramatically changed, I would say, over the last three to four years, especially in the last 12 months. Um, and I believe, however, if you kind of take a step back and you look at uh, the, the, you know, the current data management solutions that are being offered today, the narrative has not really changed, right? The, the narrative still assumes uh, a single location with an online storage tier, a nearline storage tier, and at the most an archive storage tier, right? Um, but yeah. as we all know, you know, in the question you just asked us that, uh, you know, data is more distributed, pipelines are distributed. It's not a linear flow of data from one storage tier to the, to the other. Data is everywhere, right? And I think that's where we see the challenge and that's where we believe we can help clients. Cool. So. We understand you've got this technology called DNA Fabric, I think it is. Now, um, what challenges, you know, well, can you explain a little bit more about it and what challenges it, it solves? Sure, sure. So we built DNA Fabric to you know, precisely address uh, data distribution, data disparity. And what I mean by that is what you just described. Customers are creating a lot of data. They don't know where their data is. Um, they don't know when this data is going to be used they don't know where this data is going to be used, right? So what we are trying to build is a platform that allows you to manage your data pipelines, uh, even though it's distributed, right? We, we allow you to be able to index, search, analyze your data, so you know, more importantly, where your data is, who's using it, and the second piece of this to help you mobilize your data, right? So, you know, we can help you move your data between your central locations, your remote editors, or cloud storage, essentially uh, giving you a seamless pipeline of data management, no matter where your data lives. So what are the, um, the benefits mm. of the DNA Fabric um, TC in a production environment? Yeah, I think the best way to kind of highlight um, the key benefits in a production environment um, would, be, would be, you know, through two examples of, of, I think, clients that we've helped in the last, uh, you know, six months, right? Uh, one is an active case study, so I can mention the client, it's Boardwalk Pictures. Uh, they make, you know, a number of Netflix shows. And I think their challenge going into COVID was that they had multiple editors who now needed to start working remotely from their homes. And after giving the initial VPN sort of solutions a go, you know, Editors, especially craft editors, can be very picky about the editorial experience, right? So, you know, logging in over a remote VPN connection, uh, bandwidth issues, all of that put together, you know, Boardwalk Pictures very quickly realizes they needed a way to get data to their editors so the editors could actually work on this data from home, right? So one of the first things that Fabric did in, in this classic post-production episodic pipeline, which was central, now became remote, is we sort of created this seamless data flow from their central shared storage to all the remote editors. These were all Avid Media Composer environments. As the editors sort of did their edit, the changes, the project updates, the, the media changes seamlessly went back and forth 
between all the editors. Now, this would traditionally be, you know, a rather painful process of manually moving files, you know, making sure you don't trash each other's bins. And we kind of, you know, manage that entire process for them. Um, you know, it's an active case study. It's on our website. Encourage the viewers to take a look. Um, I think the second piece where we started seeing a lot of interest also is, uh, again, another case study example. This is a large, uh, you know, customer, uh, active, high budget feature film right now. And, and I think one of the things that we started seeing with this client is when COVID hit, they started looking at cloud more they wanted to see whether you know cloud services and cloud editing can be a more active part of their uh, post-production pipeline and that's again where we came in right fabric uh linked up the cloud to their ingest workflows which was in their central on-premise location um their editors were working at home these are high-end editors craft editors and everybody was sort of synchronized uh through the fabric pipeline uh so i would say these two are you know, some, I would say, really good examples of how Fabric, uh, you know, can help, uh, 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 especially a remote production and post-production pipeline. Yeah, so traditionally, you'd, <clears throat> excuse me, traditionally you'd have had um, sort of an offline process through online finishing. Um, how does, right. uh, how's Fabric transformed the workflow there? Is, have, you, have, you, have, you, have, you, have you transformed it? That's the question, I guess. Yeah, no, no, definitely. I think one of the big, uh, big aspects of any workflow, uh, as you're describing, is the online, offline, high res, low res process, right? Um, you know, you have your editorial process, which would be in a lower resolution. I mean, you know, low resolution today is still HD, right? Um, and high res, we're talking about 4K, 8K. There's no end to it, right? Now, traditionally, this process is managed uh, on a central SAN. Uh, in one facility. Uh, so it's pretty easy to get the offline edit to the online editors, right? Uh, but now when, you know, COVID has sort of stretched the post-production pipeline, you've got your offline editors in another location, maybe some are in the cloud, right? Directly editing in the cloud. Whereas your colorists and your grading, uh, grading artists are generally sitting there, you know, maybe on, a, on an edit bay or a grading bay just in their house, right? So now the high res media needs to be brought to them. So how do you take this process, which traditionally was housed in one location and stretch it out across multiple locations? And that's once again, where Fabric can come in. With Fabric, we can keep multiple offline editors synchronized with each other's changes. But when they're sort of ready to share their offline edit, we can seamlessly, seamlessly push the edits off to a colorist uh, right to their uh, grading station at home and also push just the media they need uh, so they can finish their final color and grading session directly at home, yeah. right? So once again, much like every pipeline that's gotten stretched, so has the traditional online, offline conform process as well. And again, that's an, another place we can be very effective. As you see, this show goes out um, all over the world, but we're based in the UK where I know you work with our friends at Polar Graphics. So maybe you can tell us um, a little bit as a company, what are the benefits of using a partner like them as part of your sales chain? Yeah, I think, I think the first thing I'll say about Peter Polar Graphics is, uh, you know, at a personal level, a great set of guides, right? I think it's super important to work with people you like. We worked with them for numerous years. You know, Peter's a great guy. Um, and I think, you know, more on the business side as well, Peter has, you know, Polar Graphics has, a great network. They've been around the industry for many years. They're very well liked. Um, so, uh, you know, absolutely an organization such as ourselves, headquartered in Los Angeles, we're looking to break into Europe. Uh, you know, Polar Graphics brings us all the business and network connections and channel partner connections we need. Um, now, you know, the other thing that they've added over the past few years is great technical expertise. You know, Chris Stone has, has joined them from Zen Data. Uh, he's been a great addition. Uh, you know, a, a lot of experience kind of, you know, uh, at a technical level and a business level, I would say is, is the, you know, two main reasons we, you know, we love working with Polar Graphics. So. Yeah, they're definitely a good bunch. And Peter, yeah, I've got, got some, got some good stories I'll tell you about, uh, off, off, yeah. off air, I think. So before we let you get on with your day, something I hope you've been warned about. We're asking everyone uh, if you've got any particular hobbies or interests or something that happened to you in your life. 
other than work, of course, that we might yeah, yeah. or maybe you can share an interesting prediction for the industry or something. What you got? Yeah, I think I think you know I'm um, beyond thinking about data and storage and workflows twenty four seven. I mean, yeah. uh, I'm an app cook, right? I've lived in uh, I would say five countries in the last uh, twenty years, and uh, I can cook every Indian meal to uh, you know Southeast Asian to Thai uh, to Italian. So I think uh, a lot of my you know creative juices kind of get put into into the cooking. Um, uh, so I would say, you know, that's, that's one of my hobbies and passions. Um, but you also asked about a prediction, you know, what we think is going to happen. Um, and, you know, in a nutshell, I think um, uh, the way we started, the way we have started working uh, after COVID hit isn't going to go away, right? I think, you know, people are going to, you know, right. COVID's going to go away, but we've realized that you can work efficiently, remotely, um, and, and still work can get done. Uh, that's one big thing I think we're going to see. The second thing we're going to see is, uh, you know, the use of cloud. Uh, I think cloud is going to be more active. Uh, you know, folks are realizing that cloud can play uh, a bigger role in their production and post pipeline. I don't think it's going to be a 100% jump to cloud, but we're going to see aspects of every production and post pipeline sort of, you know, delving into the cloud and sort of coming back to on-premise. But we're going to see a lot of that in uh, in 2021. Absolutely. See a lot of that and maybe see you on MasterChef. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you, TC, for uh, coming on today. It's been, uh, it's been good to catch up and people can find out more about uh, what you have on offer at storiesdna.com. And do look out for a chat we're having with Podographics uh, coming up very soon. And you can see all of our other video interviews and kit reviews um, at kitplus.tv, which is brought to you with the support of MediaProxy. And you can find out more about them at mediaproxy.com. Thanks for watching.